It's Friday. <laughs> it's Friday. Friends, we're back, and uh, it, it, it is Friday, and I hope you're having a good day. Today, we're going to shift a little bit of the conversation. The last couple of days, we've been talking about lessons we've learned from people we've loved. Today, we're going to move to where we're going to be as a congregation at Huntersville United Methodist Church, and the conversation today is around the word grace. We're going to be reading a book together in a sermon series based on that book. The book is by our bishop, Bishop Ken Carter, and the name of the book is Unrelenting Grace. I hope you'll check it out. It is a, a, a really challenging book. I wanted to spend some time with my good friend today, Steve, talking about this word grace. I, I'm afraid we often misunderstand it. I'm afraid we often limit it. Let's talk about the word, Steve. Help us understand uh, what is grace. <laughs> Simple word, like a lot of oh, a lot of different ways to understand it. But at the heart of it is this idea that you are extended the love, mercy, fellowship of God that you in no way are entitled to. Mm. How's that? that That's close? good. So my working definition that I often use in our disciple class is God's unconditional love and God's unmerited favor. Now, we can unpack that just a little bit and think about what does it mean for something to be unconditional? Hmm. Um, that often is where we, sometimes we can get, get off of that. What, did, what do we mean by unconditional? How do you understand that term? Well, God doesn't have to do it. There's no obligation on God's side of the equation of the relationship to love us. Actually, there's every reason for God to give up on us and say, I'm, I'm done with this whole humanity thing. They've let me down so many times. They've broken my heart so many times. I just can't do it anymore, and I'm going to walk away from this. But yet, that's not who God is. And I think about the lack of conditions. There is no condition around which God doesn't love us. And, and that, for a lot of people, is a, is a place to really get tripped up. Well, it's hard because we live in a consumer society. That's, that's one of the things. We have to pay attention to well, our, how our culture works because our culture influences us. Absolutely. And so we, we live in a, a consumer society where you pay the price for the good you get. So that's part of the expectation, right? And that's our economy wouldn't work if you didn't pay the price for what you wanted. And we also live in a legalistic society that's based on um, the notion of the right, the punishment meets the crime. So you, you know, shoplift, you know, you should, you should suffer this consequence. You run a red light, you should get a ticket. You should pay the penalty. If you kill somebody, you should, the pen, you know, so the penalty goes up. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that it, it puts us in a mindset that, oh, there's not a free lunch, right? And everybody has to pay the piper. Those are, those are some words and phrases we use that, whether we know it or not, shape how we believe about how, uh, how goods and services are exchanged. So when you come to something like love, when you come to something like God's love in particular, it undermines or it throws all those things into turmoil because here's God giving us that which we could never earn and doesn't ask for anything in return. I think we often get tripped up in the Old Testament story when God chose a people through which to work primarily. That's the story of the nation called Israel. Uh, God did indeed choose to work through them, but in their own Bible, in their own stories, in their own scriptures, one of the profound places, we, we can see it in a book like Esther. We can see it in a book like um, um, uh, Nehemiah. We can see it in a, in a book like, um, oh, what's the guy that goes to preach to the uh, uh, Assyrians? The, the um, Jonah? Jonah. Thank there you. you. I was drawing a blank on Man. Jonah. And it's, it's we, getting late in the week. Yeah, even in there, even in the old... Even in the Old Testament story, there's this profound, okay, God certainly does love these people, and at the same time, God, well, God, I, God can love I these think people. That, and, it, and it offends us, because we want to think, well, if you, you don't, des you know, who deserves God's grace? Can you, yeah, uh, that guy who 
Yeah, he he's a, he's okay. But what about somebody did something that we think is absolutely horrible? Yeah. Um, and Jonah in particular is really upset with God because God calls him to go to the Ninevites, which are the enemy, the hated, the other, the outsider. If there was a problem that Israel had, it was the Ninevites' uh, fault. And yet Jonah doesn't want to go, not because... Jonah wants to go and proclaim damnation upon them, which he does, but the reason he doesn't want to go is because he knows that God may love them anyway. And, and choose to be gracious right. to them and indeed... He, he doesn't want to go take that message, you should repent, because he's afraid they would actually repent. And, and they do, too, and they do. much and to it, his and dismay. And it ticks him off. Yeah. So the other part of the phrase of grace, unconditional love, is unmerited favor. And, and that one tends also, I think, maybe to be not as understood. And the way that I like to describe it, it's, it's, it is certainly nothing we can do to either deserve it or earn more of it. And I think oftentimes that's, that's a big part of the Christian faith in life is we've got to be good. We've got to somehow repay this idea that God has loved us so gracefully. And, and we... We often uh, talk about it in strange ways, like, for instance, um, well, I better get, get back to doing this or that so that I can get my way into heaven. Like, almost like we have to store up good works to get into heaven. I'll never forget. I've told the story to the Huntersville folks a number of times. I had a next door neighbor. Uh, this was, gosh, I'm in my 20s. And, and she brought a plate of cookies across uh, and said, yeah, I'm hoping this will get me over the line. <laughs> It was as if that plate of cookies, a, a really Finally nice gesture, and they yeah. were good cookies, by the way, yeah. that was, that was going to seal her fate, and she was going to be perceived as someone that uh, earned their way into heaven. Or even people say they'll, make them, they'll do something, and they'll be like, well, I guess I won't get into heaven now. Yeah, as if I've disqualified myself by doing that. Wow. So we, we think about that word grace, and, and Bishop Carter really talks about in the first chapter of that book about the nature of grace and we say it's been in our book of discipline i don't know how long but but you know 40 50 60 years that grace is the grounding of our theological understanding it is grace that pervades every aspect and steve we often talk about three ways of of, of understanding grace provenient justifying and sanctifying sanctifying grace give us just a brief glimpse about provenient justifying and sanctifying grace. You're on the board of ordained ministry. You should know this stuff. Not going to do it. <laughs> You're going to extend me grace and I'm going to, love I, me anyway? I, I will love now, you anyway. That prevenient is God. It, it simply means God's the one who initiates. God's the one who goes first. Um, God acts in our life before we even know it to create in us the condition in which we can say yes back to God. Sometimes we'll use the analogy of a house. And the front porch is that is that image of God inviting us to the porch, God inviting us wherever we've been. It's that Holy Spirit beckoning, calling and, to us, come join me on right. the porch. And that, and it's all grace, by the way. It's, it's aspects it's, of the same grace. Right. It's not different grace, it's just, just words. It's just words, but it's, it's ways of understanding. Then justifying means, it, well, for instance, if you, if you have your Bible with you, you could probably pick it up and tell that these lines are justified. Mm -hmm. They're made right. Right. There used They're to be a up. justification key on the typewriter yep. where they would line up the script. And it means it it basically means to be made right, to be justified, to be made right with God through the work of Jesus Christ. And that's that's kind of the threshold of the door. So if the prevenient grace is the front porch, then the threshold where you move from the thr front porch into the fullness of the house is you've got to cross that threshold. And that's a time we all have to understand in our life that where, where we say yes, I want, we say yes back to God. We say yes to and God. We receive that, the gift of grace that God wants us to have. And that may include that may include baptism, that may include confirmation, that may include uh, membership into the church. There are all kinds of ways we acknowledge that externally, but it's an internal reality. And then the third one is sanctifying grace, Steve, and that happens inside the house. Yeah, and it's a pretty big house because it takes a while. It, it is not fast. Well, it's this idea that we don't end at once we come to know God. We're just at the beginning point of living out the fullness of relationship with God. And there are times where we do that better than others, but yet God keeps working in our life to shape us because this Christian journey is a journey of transformation. It, 
and it, it's a it's a journey of constant and continual growth in the love of Christ with the hope and the aspiration that we could be made perfect in love even in this lifetime. And I think the realization is we're in the room with all the host. We're, we're in the room with everyone. It's not an individual journey, and it's not a house that only you live in. You exist within this dwelling that is God of God, populated with, by the way, the people of God. And we would call the process of entire sanctification, the, enti the, the, the journey of grace, is where I learn to love you as I love myself. I learn to love you or the other, any person I, I meet with the same love that God has loved us in Jesus Which Christ. Which brings us back around to the greatest commandment, right? That, you know, love what God. is love, love the Lord your God with all your heart, and the second is only to this and your neighbor as yourself. Well, we, we hope that we've maybe whetted your appetite, whet your appetite for uh, this conversation around grace. It's going to be full on at uh, Huntersville, this and, conversation around unrelenting grace. Yeah, and we are uh, still working through our series on uh, journey to restoration, and we're in the midst of what does it mean to recognize the presence of God and understand God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and how that leads, that theological construct, I hate to use that word, that theological reality mm. shapes the very community that we live in and how we understand our relationship back to others. Well, we look forward to seeing you at 8.30 and 10.30 on Sunday at Huntersville. And 9 and 11 at... Denver. Thank you so much for your time. We look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.